Let's look at integrating Tivoli Service Request Manager. Our example scenario involves a customer-created printer problem database. And as we can see, it's now being used for other types of problems as well. So our step, first step here will be to migrate this information from this PPRS system and into TSRM. In addition, what we want to do is enrich this information by grabbing more details about the people who are doing the reporting of these problems. And that we'll get from the user directory. In TDI terms, this means three connectors. So we'll be using a JDBC connector to reach our database, then an LDAP connector to pull information or join information from an LDAP directory, and finally the Maximo connector to write information out to TSRM. We're going to simplify this to begin with by writing data to an XML document. And in addition, we'll simplify by skipping the join from LDAP. In TDI, I'll just open up a config that I've prepared for this example. We'll build a new assembly line, which I'll call Pro Printer Problem Reporting System, PPRS to TSRM. And then we'll start by adding a connector to talk to their database. So there's my JDBC connector. We'll call this read PPRS and set it to iterator mode, which is for taking some data source and feeding it into the assembly line for processing. In my case, there's already an ODBC data source set up, so I can use that one directly. And the table is PPRS. So once my connector is configured, I can now go to one of my map and connect and start stepping through the data itself, as well as discovering what the native syntax is. Select them and map them into the assembly line itself. And I like my assembly lines to display some sort of state or status in the logs as they're processing. So I've already written a um, display ticket script, which I'm going to just drag in and drop in the flow section. This one is telling the assembly line to log the following message. And I'm creating one long string by concatenating values of the various attributes that my iterator connector is reading in. And if we run this now, we should get a view of what that data looks like. Now what I can see here is that all these columns are padded with spaces. And I'm going to want to trim that away before I start writing this to other systems. And again, I have a pre-written little script, which is getting all the attribute names, going through the list of attributes, and then trimming the values. My next step now is to map these attributes that are coming in from the PPRS uh, database to the various fields that are necessary to create my incident. And I already have an attribute map prepared. I'll just drag that one in. And if we take a look at these various attributes, we can see that these are always going to be incidents. The description is mapped from summary. The long description is actually a snippet of JavaScript, which is going to include not only the summary, but the printer ID and the user. And when we get to the point that we're going to be bringing in information from our LDAP directory, we'll also have the telephone number and the full name of each person. For the external record ID and for ticket ID, I'm getting the printer ID column out of the database and then concatenating that together with the reported date. And the internal and, and reported priorities are both being set to a long value of 2. So once we have the mapping in place, I can now put in my output connector. And we'll call this one write to TSRM. And I'm going to choose to begin with here a file system connector. And we're going to call this file tsrm.xml. I also have to set up a parser. And I have a parser already configured here again. So I'll just drag that and drop that on my inherit from button. Finally, we map out those attributes that we want to write. And in this case, it will be only those that are being set up by the PPR to TSRM uh, attribute map. Now we saw there was a lot of data here, so I'm going to actually limit the amount of tickets or the number of problems that we're going to read out of the database to 25. And this will keep our tests a little bit shorter. We should now be able to find this file. And let's just open this in a browser window. So here's what our long description is looking like. Here's what the various other attributes are being mapped to. Let's add the join from LDAP and bring in a little bit more information that we'll put into this long description. 
And again, I've got a connector already set up. My PPR users will drop this one here before our attribute map needs those values, because at this point is when we're going to be looking for the CN and the telephone number. So I can now remove the comments from these. And then in our PPR users connector, this one's already set up to go to the directory. Again, we connect to discover what information is available there. And here we're going to map in CN and telephone number. And because we're in a lookup mode, we have to define the link criteria. The user that's being read in will be matched with the mail attribute of our LDAP directory. Now, in addition, just in case this lookup fails to find information, we also have to tell the connector how to deal with that. And that I did in the library here on the on no match hook. So this is being inherited here in this instance. So we're going to print out a message to the log file saying not found in LDAP. And then we're going to set some default values for these missing people. Now let's run this assembly line and see what it looks like. I can see my message are appearing now in the log output. So here's the, the not found messages. And if we take a look at our file and refresh this, we're now getting more information in on these people. Now the last thing we have to do here is to filter out those closed tickets. And as we can see here, there's quite a few of those. And I'm going to do that by dropping in a branch. I'll just call that if closed. And I'm going to drag the branch actually in front of the display tickets. We're not going to, even going to show anything if this is a closed branch. And I'm going to check to see if it's closed by examining the status field and seeing if it contains the value closed. I can't say equals because it could be padded with string or spaces at the end, which means it won't be an exact match. But I can say if contains or even starts with. And we'll remove the case sensitivity. And in that case, I just want to exit out of the flow section. So I'll just add a script component, which I'll call exit flow. And we'll just simply use the exit flow call. Now I'm going to remove the limitation 25 that we put on our iterator. That way it'll read up all the information coming out of the database. And now we can see that actually 246 of these were filtered out and only 64 went on to output. So let's bring up Maximo and have a look at what's in there right now. Now I'm setting the internal priority to 2 for all of my incidents. So I'm going to just search for those with priority 2. Now let's go back to TDI and swap out the connector interface used here with the Maximo connector. And I have one pre-configured here to work with TSRM. I'll just drag that and drop that on the inheritance button. And as you can see, it's already set up now to work with the new MBOs. And there's nothing left here really except to test it. Now the first time that this web service is accessed in the MEA interface, it takes a few moments to negotiate the connection. But once that's unrunning, then the updates happen a lot faster. So now we've added a few tickets. Let me just stop this. And then we'll bring up Maximo again. And we'll search for all status 2 one more time. And here are the new tickets that we just imported. we can see that we're getting the person's name and telephone number in here. Now, to make this actually a deployable solution, I'm going to need to put something in the error hooks of my connectors to make sure that these don't stop. Setting up logging for the assembly line, so that way we actually have a persistent log we can go and view afterwards. And finally, if we want to run this assembly line periodically to just pick up changes, we can simply enable the Delta engine.